everybody this side rahul magan here is a chief executive officer of treasury consulting llp and today we are going to speak about very interesting topic which is black scholes model so in this what we are going to do we are going to cover how to value a black scholes model how what black scholes model is all about and all so black scholes is again one of the fantastic models we have wherein uh, you know all the traders and all the bankers you know majority of the options are still getting valued using black scholes models however at the same time we need to acknowledge the fact that uh, the banks across the globe are having their own proprietary softwares which they are using to value the you know the option pricing like jp morgan and other they have their own proprietary softwares they have their own proprietary models but overall if we see that black scholes is still uh, very very relevant model which we need to understand so what exactly is black scholes is you know black scholes <coughs> is a very very i would say it's a very important model that's something which we need to understand now you know and black scholes works on various ways you know black scholes is having variety of the input parameters example see this you have s0 which is acting as an underlying price underlying price i would refer this is a spot price you have x which is known as strike price i can also refer the same you know as the agreed price between two parties you know you have you and jp morgan you and doshe and other this is an agreed price then you have then you have standard deviation which is also known as volatility but this is very important to discuss because volatility once we are talking about a volatility 99% people tend to believe that volatility is uh, you know uh, it's all about the standard deviation of course yes but not today in statistics volatility is still all about standard deviation but technically uh, volatility is beyond standard deviation sitting 2016 so currently volatility is divided into three parts one is known as historical volatility i shortly refers balls then you have realized volatility i refer balls then you have implied volatility then i refer balls right in uh, in uh, in in the formula is that i would fully appreciate the fact that you know your historical balls is equals to standard deviation because suppose i wanted to calculate the price of uh, uh, calculate the volatility of usd to jpy dollar to japanese yen effective 2006 to 2016 which is uh, sitting today which is what date which is 10th of october 2016 then i can calculate using a uh, volatility uh, using standard deviation but one is known as realized volatility now what do you mean by realized volatility realized volatility is nothing but you have historical vols minus outliers so you would have an outliers that you need to reduce from that because these these outliers needs to be reduced now outlier is of two type one you have the model based outliers and one you have you know the your natural outliers now model based outliers are shortly known as bugs because there is no model in this globe uh, which cannot have any outlier you know you can refer to any model across all the globe that models have uh, that uh, models have the outliers then you have implied walls and this is something which is and this is something which is very very important uh, when it comes to the implied walls now what is implied walls is implied walls is realized walls plus minus views i will not refer views i will say thoughts or assumptions or projections you can use any word i am using all i am always using views now what do you mean by that now what do you mean by that is now sitting today uh, you know i would say that uh, till few weeks ago everybody was believing that uh, japanese yen will go to 100 and uh, sorry it will go to 99 of course the expectations were like uh, expectations were like that that it will go to 99 but if we if we carefully look to uh, look today then you will get to know that it is moving towards 103 
I am right in front of a Bloomberg TV. While watching this video, I am also looking at the Bloomberg TV and I can very well see that 2016 International Monetary Fund conference that happened in, uh, you know, your Washington DC. Here, the central governor of, uh, you know, your uh, Bank of Japan clearly, with Mr. Kuroda, he clearly said that there is still a lot of firepower which is in the hands of the Central Bank of Japan to go ahead. It effectively means that he's still capable enough to do a huge amount of quantitative easing, right? And if this would happen, of course, yield would fall. Of course, the first sentiment would be, you know, the first thing, uh, the first thing that would hit your minds would be that interest rate you know interest rate should decrease uh, interest rate should go down and so would be the currency and this was something why what what everybody was expecting but unfortunately that not happened what did happen that interest rate went up uh, sorry uh, what did happen that the currency rates went up and uh, market still continue to believe that you know uh, there is still a room for quantity easing i'm very surprised at how market can believe that but nonetheless that is something which is out of our power so while describing black scholes model we need to appreciate the fact that you should not use historical walls because this is full of outliers yes there is a lot of debate which is happening currently which is on unconventional monetary policy which is happening across the globe in fact a uh, lot of people on the tv and media including myself also when we give interviews we also suggested that you know there is nothing known as unconventional policy now because that was the word which we supposed to use in 2008 but we cannot use the word now why because uh, you know there is nothing unconventional now so unconventional is nothing everything is conventional so sitting today from a central bank if you ask that what is the difference between conventional and unconventional monetary policy i doubt that he would be able to answer you very clearly so the first flaw which we need to correct in the black scholes model is that we need to uh, we need to work on the implied walls rather than on the historical wall. Unfortunately, people still continuously working on the implied walls. Then you have R. R is risk free rate. I strongly doubt that R is R can be a risk free rate, especially in the Black Scholes model. Because certainly we need to appreciate the fact that majority of the economies across the globe, and in fact the big economies across the globe, they are in negative territory. You know what do you mean by negative territory not to mention to you especially like you know your europe your tokyo your swiss they are in a negative negative territory as i mentioned you i'm sitting right in front of a bloomberg tv it is clearly showing that the 10 year japanese yield is trading at minus six basis point so if you give 100 uh, yen to bank of japan to manage then they will give you 99.94 this is certainly not not great how can we treat this as a risk free rate on the other hand if we talk about the countries who are offering higher interest rate then, then take an example of the portugal portugal is offering approximately three percent yield today which is highest in terms of carry in fact australia is offering 1.5 and your so-called canada is offering approximately two and uh, you are to and your ust which is united state treasuries are offering roughly 1.75 10 year yield but this is certainly, you know, uh, they are investment grade or they are triple A rated. Can we take Portugal as a risk free rate? Sitting today when we know that half of the world, not half, in fact, I think bigger, according to research report by international banks, more than $13.5 trillion of uh, foreign currency of uh, sovereign debt is in the negative interest rate policy. So how can we go ahead with this so called risk free rate? This is something a catch which we need to consider, which we need to check. Time is, of course, uh, you know, it is time to expiration. That is something which we should learn. This is time to time to expiration. Now, Black Skulls is worked on a formula, and the formula of the Black Skulls is not very difficult. Now, the formula of the Black Skulls is that you will first calculate D1. D1 is IN s by x which is spot by strike plus time bracket r this free interest rate there are some people who are taking the dividend yield also but we are not taking dividend yield into consideration because uh, uh, dividend yield is uh, we are not computing for uh, equities we are computing for currencies dividend yield plus standard deviation square what is standard deviation square that is variance we all know divided by two 
we will get down we will say standard deviation root 2 uh, sorry root t d2 is very simple to calculate this is d1 minus standard deviation by d2 this is how we will calculate d1 and d2 and d1 and d2 are far the first steps of a black skulls model so before moving higher let me uh, let me uh, elaborate the black skulls so here is the spot price which you take x is the strike price the strike price is then agreed price you know this uh, standard deviation is a is a volatility in statistics but i strongly disagree that this can be treated as a volatility because uh, volatility can be further divided into three parts one is historical volatility realized volatility and implied volatility now historical volatility means a volatility which includes outliers and uh, realized volatility is historical minus outliers right please don't add outliers please please don't add outliers and uh, implied volatility is uh, realized volatility plus minus views you can have you can use different words from this views like you can have uh, your words like expectations you can have words like uh, you know movements and other the choice is yours you can use any word right then you will calculate our risk free interest rate this is something again a big catch which we need to understand because there is nothing known as risk free interest rate in the, in the global economy and especially when when approximately 13 trillion dollar of the debt is sitting is having negative interest rate policy so there is nothing known as uh, risk free interest rate policy to be very honest right but nonetheless we have d1 d1 is uh, in which is uh, log natural s by x spot by strike plus t r plus standard deviation by 2 and this d2 is d2 is this now this is d1 and d2 but we need to calculate the prices of the options so options prices are calculating using this you will calculate the call prices like this you will say s0 which is your uh, spot e exponential exponential you very well understand e raised to the power minus t into and d1 and d1 is nothing but the standard normal cumulative distribution function you go to your uh, google and you can get a ready-made ready-made tables of that it's a standard normal distribution function so you just need to go to google you will get a ready-made functions of that so there is nothing which you need to memorize and there is nothing which you need to learn that exactly how it will go and uh, how to how to memorize this and so on so forth okay and uh, then you have minus x x is the strike price you're very well aware it's a strike e minus r t r is a risk free interest rate into n d2 this is the value of the call option right then you have value of the put option put option is little reverse of that i would say there is nothing to memorize in this which is x you know e raised to the power minus rt the only difference is n minus d2 as simple as that and then we have minus s0 e raised to the power minus t into n minus d1 which is known as put option so this is what we all about today for a black skulls model but one thing i for uh, you know uh, this is how you will calculate the call this is how we calculate the put but before winding up this video, we certainly need to understand one fact very clearly that volatility and this print interest rate need to be taken into consideration seriously. The reason is reason is absolutely simple. The reason is that this volatility, you know, uh, there is nothing known as historical world of historical volatility now across the globe is is computing using implied walls. So you need to take implied walls. And secondly, there is nothing known as risk free interest rate. To be very honest, that risk free, the days of risk free interest rate are gone. So these needs to be taken into consideration. Then you have the formula of D1, then you have the formula of the D2. This is how you will calculate the price of the call in the port. And uh, you can do that. But before winding up this video, I would like to stress one fact very clearly that when it comes to options strategies, please have your own, please have your own. proprietary softwares because this matters have your own proprietary softwares because these proprietary softwares uh, because black skulls cannot be used uh, you know that way black skulls cannot be used that 
uh, black skull can, black skulls cannot be used that so this is something which we need to learn to be very honest right and uh, just one thing uh, before winding up uh, this uh, video i would like to stress few simple things that how you know uh, you know how example uh, what do you mean by n minus d1 n minus d1 is n d1 minus 1 simple or let me say n minus d2 this is equals to n d2 minus 1 this was for the today uh, as for the books black skulls can be used to value the option greeks also but uh, i strongly doubt that can be used but option greeks are uh, very very important i would say option greeks are very very important and our next video would be covering the option greeks we thank you very much and uh, you know our contact details our contact details is as follows our contact details is treasury consulting llp at the rate gmail.com and my mobile number is 9899242978. You can give me a Skype as well. My Skype contact is Rahul5327. And my Twitter is, is RahulMagan8. So we thank you very much for your time. And... Uh, Hope to see you soon. This is Rahul from Treasury Consulting. Thank you.